Jeff, I've heard you talk about a new switch in the cockpit. Can you uh, explain that concept a little bit? Yeah, you, we, we talk about a switch. It, it's probably more of an analogy than an actual switch, but if you would envision um, a pilot selector panel that had a three position switch, uh -huh. no pilots, one pilot, two pilot. And the whole concept there is we're trying to make sure that our engineering staff understands that we want these helicopters to be able to be configured for whatever mission they have to perform. I think it also speaks to a level of autonomy, mm -hmm. of predictability of the aircraft, of, uh, I like to use the psychological term of a self-actualized helicopter that knows who it is, knows what it needs to do, and always knows how to get home. So we use it as an analogy, but, but you know, quite frankly, there's a good chance that before too long we'll have that switch hmm. in a couple of our uh, flying test beds. And this will obviously be uh, fly-by-wire uh, technology involved in something like this? I think fly-by-wire is the foundational technology for all this. You know, once we're having a computer basically move the flight controls. Mm -hmm. Now to replace the human with another computer that is sensing position in space, pitch, roll, longitudinal position. Yeah. I think at that point you could have anything move the flight controls. And that's where we view the difference between uh, fly-by-wire and a, a truly autonomous mm -hmm. functioning vehicle. But I think fly-by-wire is a foundational technology. So which helicopters has Sikorsky put fly-by-wire on now, for at least a test basis? Well, right now we have uh, fly-by-wire. We flew it in Comanche, uh -huh. obviously. Uh, we have flown an S-92 with a fly-by-wire system, which will be transported into the Canadian Maritime. Uh -huh. And we're in development of X-2 technology fly-by-wire, a fly-by-wire Blackhawk, and the CH-53K is fly-by-wire. So that's four out of our nine development programs is fly-by-wire. Are you considering the S-76 for fly-by-wire as well? The D model will not have fly-by-wire initially. Uh -huh. um, I think mm -hmm. that by the time we get past the D, or right. I think the next thing will have fly-by-wire. As you well know, you unveiled the X-2 at the Heli Expo to quite a bit of fanfare and attention and I realize it's going to take some time for the X-2 to be in flight test before you really know the capabilities and if it's going to work as, as well as you hope it will. But right now, what kind of application are you considering for the X-2? Well, I envision that we have to get this airplane in the air, <laughs> and I envision that this suite of technologies comes together and shows that we can take a true helicopter beyond this 165 knot paradigm we're all in. Right. I don't know, I honestly don't know where or if we'll take it anywhere else. But I do know that every day we've worked on it, we have learned something else mm -hmm. that can be applied throughout the company. And so I think it's important that as we unveiled at HAI, and you saw, I think you were there, you saw the, the reaction to the mm -hmm. product at HAI was tremendous. Yeah. Um, I think that we're always going to learn and to keep technology always ahead of us is, is what Igor was all about in pioneering mm -hmm. flight and we're going to do the same thing but I honestly don't know yet how that gets applied into anything that looks like a product. Now a lot of the airframe manufacturers are talking about capacity problems unable to meet the, the huge backlogs that they have right now which it's good to have a good big backlog but uh, customers get a little bit tired when they have to wait too long. So what, is that challenge facing Sikorsky as well? It is, it is. Um, I think, and I, I can't speak for the other manufacturer, we've done, in my view, a reasonable job of, of predicting this was going to happen. We're opening up facilities mm -hmm. all over the world to meet the capacity. Uh, we're going to have to increase our military production 60% in the next three years. So um, I think we've done a good job. I think what happens in our industry, and I think you know this, Randy, the overcapacitization threat is really what sometimes limits us. The fact that these markets are cyclic. I think we're all deciding now that in the short to midterm, this is still a growth business. The U.S. Navy has temporarily suspended development of the VH-71 Marine One helicopter 
Uh, do you think uh, the S92 is has a chance of being considered again? Oh, did they? <laughs> I, I, I tongue in cheek, Randy. I, I have no comment. That's it's uh -huh. none of my business. Though. We all struggle at times, so we'll we'll, we'll assume they'll do. Is that there any time. hope that they may consider the uh, S92 again? Look, we have a great product. We have an absolutely outstanding product. It's flying with any head of state that has decided on a helicopter, except for one, has chosen the S-92. So if, if anything happens and they're looking for alternate transportation, we fly them now, we can continue to fly them.